So, has anybody ever suspended their Linux laptop in here? Good. And <laughs> did it work? Yeah. Did it resume? Once. No. <laughs> okay, so who is expecting the annual I'll make your suspend work talk today? <laughs> this time it's not. I try to, to be a little bit of the oracle and, and tell you something about the future of suspend or what I think will be the future of suspend. So the, since it's working for everybody, I don't need the we'll make it work talk. We'll do the what's what's going on, like what's going next, what's going on, and what will be the new features, what will be the new the new development. So this is today the future of Linux suspend or how I see. Yeah. First I'll describe what's the state of the art now. That's what most of you should already have seen sometime. The, the second part is what's next. That's the more interesting part. So today, if you want to get Suspend to run working, basically from the kernel side it's working well. What does often not work that well is giving, getting the video card back to life. I've had a, a long uh, an, an, in a talk especially about this last year and it's all, it was very interesting for many people but basically today it's we need to somehow identify the machines that work and we need to whitelist them based on some matching if it's a DMI match and there are two ways to whitelist them today one is the whitelist in S2 RAM users of OpenSUSE who have ever did a file or bug against Suspend to RAM will, this bug will be assigned to me and I will have tell them to go to the Suspend to RAM site on OpenSUSE or Wiki and get their machine whitelisted. There are lots of options. The Suspend to RAM group tool is part of the user space. <laughs> it has a pretty good whitelist, pretty extensive, but also the benefit is it's a standalone program. You don't need any other programs installed, basically. It just has to run. It has everything built in, including the whitelist. And that's also a drawback of this program. It's a little bit unflexible. To change the whitelist, basically, I edit a, a C file and you have to reach compile the program. We have some conceptual problems because we only do DMI matching. That's the SM BIOS strings that are in the BIOS where we match, okay, it's a Dell D600 machine. Unfortunately, some machines are shipped, for example, with different video cards. You can get the same Dell machine with an Intel video card, with an ATI video card, and with a NVIDIA video card, some of them. And there's often no way to distinguish them by DMI matching. Maybe Dell knows there's some different serial numbers or something like that, but you don't want to match on the serial number. So we can't do that. And yeah, it needs to be recompiled, as I already said. The second whitelist is kept in HAL. It is, there's in, in HAL, it's also pretty extensive because basically we're merging the whitelist for as, as long as it's possible with the STRAM infrastructure. <coughs> HAL is much more flexible to match. You can match, for example, on the PCI ID of the video cards. Additionally, usually they also do DMI matches, but you can additionally match on the PCI ID of the video card. So you can distinguish those D820 from Dell with the media card and the D820 with the Intel card. You can apply different options. Basically, that's the problem that you sometimes need different options depending on the video card. Another good thing about HAL is that you can easily extend it by adding an FDI file. That's what Timo showed you in this talk before, that you just change the FDI file and HAL knows something new about the hardware. The downside is you need HAL running to use it actually. Which means you cannot just go <coughs> to init bin bash and try it out from there. Because there you have no HAL running and you have no database. That's the biggest drawback of using HAL and actually one that's considered major by one of the Suspend developers. But, well, he doesn't maintain the whitelist. So. <coughs> then we're by the... the Oh, okay. Suspend to disk? No, suspend to RAM is over, that's the state of the art. Suspend to disk. Um, there are different methods. There's the old proven kernel method where you just do echo disk into sys power states, the machine suspends into the swap device. It works. I have not a single bug report for 10.3 for those methods, maybe because it's no longer default. Um, 
it has no fancy option, it's relatively slow, but basically when, whenever somebody has a problem with suspend to RAM, uh, no, sorry, suspend to disk, everybody will tell him, try the Chrome method. If, it, if this works, then it's not a driver problem, for example. It's for quite some time in kernel. 2.6, I'd say it's usable since about 2.6.5. It was in the first place, it was very adventurous. Then there's the user space suspend. That's what we are in OpenSUSE are using as a default now where some parts of the suspend pro process just got shifted from the kernel space to the user space, basically the stuff where the kernel developers didn't want to tackle with. Compression, encryption, somewhat fancier user interfaces, progress bars and so on, stuff that when you try to push those to Linux Torvalds, they say, go away, I don't want your fancy graphic <laughs> stuff. I run X, that's enough call for me. It started, as, it started out as a hack, but it's since in mainline count since 2617 and it's working quite well. It does for me. We're coming to that later. <laughs> then there's Tuxon Ice, that's formerly known as Suspend 2, which was developed by uh, as a kernel patch by Nigel Cunningham, who's a very nice guy, by the way. And he's maintaining this since 2.4 days. And it has <coughs> it's relatively easy to set up once the kernel is patched and built, but that's a little bit of a problem, of course. It has lots of fancy options. It can do compression, encryption, splash screens, text mode user interface, almost everything. And it does this in kernel space. And that's where most of the kernel developers say, no way is this stuff ever going to be merged. And it's quite well supported. It has a quite huge following, and many users are very happy with it. This does not mean that the kernel developers are happy with it, but users like it and it deserves to be mentioned. And as I said, Nigel is a very nice guy. <laughs> so that's what we have now. Those are the, the methods. Um, in user space, there's no nothing new to tell since the last year. We're using PM utils, which is yeah, evolving. Power safe daemon is no longer used for suspend since 10.2, I believe mean, it is. There was still the possibility, but then we shifted to HAL and PM utils, as everybody has probably heard in last year's talk. So, part two, that's the interesting part. What's next? Do you already? So, in the future, right now it's going on. For suspend, there's a, a mechanism, it's called the freezer. That's everybody who has tried to suspend and has not used the splash screen has probably seen stopping processes. And one in every hundred suspends, it probably said failed and just returned to the graphical display. This sometimes happens. The freezer stops all the processes so that the machine is really quiet and later the kernel can do its atomic image copying stuff and so on. And the freezer, it has some problems. Usually uh, processes that are in state D, which is basically waiting for IO, they cannot be stopped. And People complain about the freezer on the Linux kernel mailing list and then some high profile kernel developers say okay, this freezer stuff is broken anyway, so right now it looks like it will get removed, sooner or later. Probably later, but it it's, will probably be re removed and there's just, yeah, there's a, a very a, a prominent kernel developer last week again was ranting against suspense, it's this Finnish guy, and he is also one problem and says, okay, this freezer, maybe we should do away with it. This will happen first for suspend to RAM, just because there it's much easier, and later, but probably it will also happen for suspend to disk. It will not happen soon, but it will happen. The removal needs to be carefully considered, because there are many parts of the kernel who just don't expect to that stuff vanishes under their feet, and so there are many. There will, we will see many interesting kernel loops on the way to have the freezer gone. Because right now, it, the system is put basically in a consistent state. All processes are stopped. Nobody will do DMA and stuff, and then we copy the image to the disk, for example. Or we tell the BIOS to now shut the, the <coughs> board machine down, uh, save. We, we by ourselves, we save the CPU state and then we tell the BIOS to put this machine into suspend to RAM. So it's always in a consistent state. But the freezer makes, for example, suspend to RAM slower than it needs to be, needs to be because it has to stop all processes, it has to wait until they're stopped. And sometimes it fails. That's the, 
the greatest problem is that it sometimes fails. So that yeah, what annoys people and instead the, the the trend goes instead of we fix it up, people have to, it's not really fixable. There's discussion about that, but the discussion is probably basically over. It will be removed. I don't think removing the freezer will solve all those problems automatically. We will just see shiny new better problems. <laughs> As always. Then there's work going on in the driver infrastructure and the power management core. <coughs> Rafael de Sochi is a, also a very nice guy from Poland. He's doing quite a, a lot of work in the background of power management stuff and he is he wanted to do this the overhauling of the driver infrastructure for kernel 2624. Kernel 2624 is out and running on this machine and the infrastructure is not completely overhauled just because he did not want to break everybody's machine. So he said, okay, first he has a, a daytime job he has to do, and then he needs just more time. That's part of the discussion he had with this Finnish guy last week. Where Linus basically said, why are you using the same code path for suspend to RAM and for suspend to disk? Which is a valid question, and this was asked years ago. So basically, in former times it was just easy, somebody had developed the, the code path for suspended disk and they just used the same, we suspend the drivers and so everything was done the same for suspended disk and suspended RAM. Now you can argue that these are two totally different things or that those are similar. That's an argument that's had, that has been fought on, on Linux kernel mailing list for two years and basically today everybody agrees, okay, we'll separate it but somebody needs to do it. That's Rafael's job, he's doing it now. It's going on slower than he planned it, but it's, it will take place. There's lots of background work that you don't see done in the, all the drivers, in the power management core. All those drivers now, until today, they only have a suspend method. So if you do suspend to RAM or suspend to disk, they get the suspend method and they shut themselves down mostly. Now, now, <coughs> sorry. now they get two methods, a method for suspend to RAM and a method for suspend to disk. And most of them will probably behave the same, uh, but some will just say, okay, I don't need to do anything for suspend to run because the system will take care anyway that the state is restored after suspend to run. But for suspend to disk, we are sure we lose power and nobody will help us with that. So we need to re-initialize some special. It depends on the driver. This needs to be done and this will take some time. Then there's the question, will there be a, a merge for suspend to run two for suspend two? And uh, Nigel did some effort, efforts uh, around a year ago or two years ago. He wanted to merge Suspend 2 to the mainstream kernel because maintaining a patch outstream of the 2.6 mainstream kernel is a pain in the ass because it changes so fast you have to adopt to every, what, what in, in former times was uh, from the change from 2.2 to 2.4 is today I'd say from 2.15 to 2.20. Uh, 2.6.15 to 2.6.20. So the, the kernel changes very fast, and the kernel developers say, okay, that's an, an internal interface, nobody should use it anyway, or they should push their stuff upstream. So he tried to push his stuff upstream, but for the reasons I said before, there's lots of user interface stuff in there, and it will probably never go upstream. That's what many of the involved parties have told me. So, then the next problem is the suspend 2 is heavily dependent on the freezer. He's, he has also done improvements to the freezer so that for him it works better, but those were considered highly complicated. Nobody, there was there was some stuff in there where the kernel developer said, well, maybe this works for you, but nobody can explain why it works better than the old one. So as long as we don't know why this fixes the problems, why make it more complicated than it was? Maybe it's just voodoo cult programming. Or it's, so he has some problems. His problem now is, is that he, the freezer is going away sooner or later, and then the suspend 2 or Tucson Ice concept, he will have to <coughs> take care of that. That's probably not an easy job. What Nigel is doing, he's contributing lots of, through his, through his huge community he has, this large community, he's contributing lots of fixes that where he gets a bug report and he finds out, okay, that's not a suspend 2, or took some ice, sorry, a took some ice problem, the project got renamed. It's a not a took some problem, so he fixes the driver and sends the driver fix upstream. So Nigel is continuously contributing good bug fixes and he's really doing a great work here. I 
I think he deserves more merit for what he does, and he's really fighting a, a, a Sisyphus battle because it will not get upstream. Probably. I'm sure. Then there's some funny guys. They think, oh, I. This suspended disk is totally broken, it never worked for me, and we could do this using KDump. KDump is a tool for, if I understand it correctly, it's a tool for getting crash dumps. So you crash the kernel, it puts all it like a core dump, but from the kernel onto some partition, wherever. And basically, if you do not necessarily crash the kernel, but just say, okay, dump, dump core and later load this core file and start it again while well, you did a suspended disk and resume. And there was actually somebody who did a presentation at LinuxCon for Australia and said that will be the way for suspended disk. So I said, okay, this guy is sometimes proposing interesting stuff. And I asked around and some people think he had smoke tongues in strange before he held this talk. I'm not sure. I haven't heard it. The problem is, it's a two-hour hack to get this working. If you sit down for two hours, you get this working, but this again will not, with some magic dust, blow away all the driver problems you had before. They will still, still be there. You still need to re reinitialize the devices. You still need to make sure that you load the correct image back, and so on. It's, it, it's an interesting proof of concept but nobody knows what the real benefit is. And so it will happen. It will come to the mainline kernel sooner or later, but it will not replace the existing methods with the user space suspend and the kernel space suspend. Or as Raphael has told me, this will be the new way to suspend once he sees a working implementation that's comparable with features, speed, reliability, and the uh, ease to set up and then he made some blank lines, at which is probably never. <laughs> we will see. Everybody is working on a, uh, is waiting for a working solution. That's actually, in the end, I don't care. I really don't care how the suspended disk is done, as long as it's working, it's fast, and it's reliable. So we'll see. That's one of the possible things to do. Then a pretty interesting project where Pavel Matic is working on is uh, Sleepy Linux. <coughs> it's called Sleepy Linux, where he basically says, okay. <coughs> Sorry, and he says we need to push suspend to RAM much harder. So if the system is idle for say, 10 seconds, why not suspend it in this time? And this is uh, he has a working prototype. His his thing his tagline is the hardware is capable of doing better, but we don't use it. And one one problem is that for example now in suspend to RAM. The, in the BIOS switches off the displays, but with some with, with some help from the vendors, from the BIOS vendors, from the hardware vendors, we could probably suspend the machine without switching off the display. And then you could still read your mail. And once you push a button, the machine wakes up and it displays the next mail, and it can go to sleep again. And this is stuff where Linux, I think, in the PC world leads the pack because on Windows. Wista just got worse with the power consumption, and we are trying to get even more small stuff out. And actually, who who has seen the Nokia internet tablets? They basically they are doing the same. They they don't have a dedicated suspend state. They just switch off more and more hardware that's unused at the moment. And if it's unused for three minutes, they also switch off the display and probably stop the CPU clock or something like that. And then the machine is will suspend. It's not. They don't. With some help from the from the hardware vendors, if there's a if we show that this is doable, maybe Intel might be interested and in support this better from the BIOS, and it will it will never work as good as on those internet tablets with the, with those embedded processors that are especially designed for it. But we can probably do much better on the on, even on PC hardware. So that's an interesting thing. We will I will not be able to show this on next Fostem in full working condition. I'm sure. But it's interesting. Yes. Isn't the OLPC doing something similar? Probably yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm. So there I'm, we look at an x86-like. Yes, exactly. So it's often it's mostly a, a a matter of firmware. It's not a matter of the hardware. The hardware can often do it, but the, the BIOS is not prepared. We don't have a. <coughs> excuse me. 
we now have a ACPI mode S3, which is a full fledged suspend tool. Uh, and there the display is off. This defined this. And so maybe we need a state S2.9 where the display stays on, and the, the graphics card still renders the image. That's also awesome. <coughs> So, and where the machine no longer consumes 10 watts, but maybe only 2. And that's okay as long as I can read my mail with something like that. Yes? What if you integrate this functionality into the driver? driver shuts the hardware down when it's not used. That's also happening right now, for example, with USB auto suspend. I've built some hardware Yes, that's... PC hardware is quite stupid often. It's, and nobody cared about stuff like power management until maybe two years ago. Yes, those laptops, but, well, they did not bring the money. Right now, today, as everybody is wanting to get Ener Energy Star compliant, as as data center power consumption is really an issue, that that people are willing to pay more money for hardware that is able to run with lower ele electricity costs. This is all stuff that's going into it. It's not only the it's not only the suspense stuff, but it's also the runtime power management stuff that will be in the drivers and maybe even in the hardware. So yeah, we will see there. We will see improvements in that. I'm quite sure. So the future in the kernel side, and now the future on the user space side. What will happen to this suspend whitelist? Obviously, some of you will have thought, well, why do they have two times the same whitelist? The suspend to RAM whitelist is maintained by me, so I'm guilty of promoting one of them. But actually, now I'm trying to get rid of it. Because first it's a lot of work maintaining it, and then I, we, we've just found out that it, it doesn't scale well. We cannot, we can only match the MI strings in suspend to RAM, and of course I can now start building an infrastructure where I can also match PCI IDs. And then, but then the problem arises, so probably you have different options to suspend if you have installed the binary only NVIDIA driver, or if you're using the open source driver. So which option do you put into the whitelist? With hell. I'm not sure if you can do this now, but it's probably it will be pretty trivial to match on some installed software version or just let the software install or set some keys on where it's okay, we have the <coughs> binary only driver or we have the we have the free driver, which need different options. So I'm basically saying okay, we will we'll drop the suspend to RAM whitelist sooner or later, we'll put it into HAL. For the user this will make no difference because the user hopefully just clicks onto his GNOME Power Manager icon or presses FNF4 on the ThinkPad and the machine just suspends. So he doesn't need to know where the whitelist comes from. And we will have, we will <coughs> concentrate the efforts to, to put one good whitelist together, which is even bigger and works on even more machines than maintaining two in parallel. So this, somebody uh, told me this sentence is a little bit mis misleading. We will not only move the S2 RAM whitelist to HAL, but the efforts will move from maintaining the S2 RAM whitelist to maintaining the HAL whitelist. And then for some it means, okay, you need to have HAL installed, otherwise you, can, you won't be able to suspend out of the box. But basically that's true already. With the SUSE suspend, uh, with the SUSE 10.3, suspend is done via HAL and PM utils. Yes, you can call PM utils manually as root on the console, you can call PM suspend, but I'm quite sure that's not what everybody uses every day. And the one who wants to use it from the command line can still do a wrapper script which calls S2 RAM with the options he needs for his machine. So it's, I think it's not that bad as Pavel usually puts it. Pavel is the one who says, I want to be able to suspend with, from init pin bash without having hard running. And I say, yeah, okay, then take over the whitelist maintenance. He doesn't want that. So this, this will probably happen. PM Utils is, has some pretty interesting stuff going on because it's actually it got forked effectively. A new maintainer has taken over, basically without consulting the old one, if I have understand this correctly. And okay, the old one wasn't very responsive, so often there was silence for a month on the mailing list, and then he replied to mails, and well, during one <coughs> month of silence, the project got moved to a JIT tree and there have been lots of lots of commits but I have still to see a, a real bug fix or something like that. So development is, development is ongoing 
for the user, not much will change. The distributions will package it up, they can use the old version, the new version, they both work. Well, it's basically, I think it's feature complete, most of, most of it. So that's what happens in user space. And now it comes to you, the users. What can you all do to make this future brighter? Who has reported a bug against suspend in here? Against distribution, against the kernel, or something like that? Who, now again, who had a resume failure? So, <laughs> where are your bug reports? That's, this is really an important issue. It's as I, I told him before, I, I always uh, expect suspended disk working just fine for everybody because it does for me and I have very little bug reports against it. So apparently it just works. So the problem is everybody, everybody probably thinks, well, it, this stuff doesn't work anyway, so why should I file a bug report? That's wrong. You need to file bug reports. You need to file bug reports at those kernel developers who don't fix their broken drivers. You need to file bug reports at the distributions who don't package it correctly. File them. If it's a distribution bug, if you're using OpenSUSE, go to bugzilla.com. If you're using some other distribution, they sure have a bug tracker. That's file bugs. It's, if they don't want it, okay, then if they say go away, we don't want suspend to work. But I'm quite sure they won't say that. Yes? Uh, I, I didn't have a resume failure. I hit suspend and the screen went blank and then it woke up again. It, it couldn't go to sleep. Yes, that's also a bug. And there was no log messages, no yeah. error yeah. messages. Then file a bug. If you, if you, you, if you oh my god, what happened? Yeah, then file a bug. And uh, if you're using SUSE, the bug will probably get assigned to me. And then I will say, okay. The, bug, the log file is there, and if I get 10 people, it doesn't work, I didn't find the log, then I will think about where well, maybe documentation should be better. <laughs> that's, even, even if you find the bug in the documentation, that's a bug. Even if you find, say, I cannot find the documentation. Yeah, that's also a bug. That's probably the most, the most serious bug if there's no documentation. And I know it. I, I'm guilty of not writing enough documentation, of course, and there's always stuff that needs to be done first, but we need to fix that, so, yeah, file bugs. Even the kernel developers, they are ugly, loud, they are probably, they, got, they are eating their children or something like that, all <laughs> mean, ugly people, but they don't bite, and basically just bite back if they do. So, if they write broken software, they need to fix it. Even if it's the kernel, and even if it's this this all hyper prominent guy, if you have a detailed bug report, he will probably be a nice guy and say, okay, come back or try to let us kernel. Oh, I have, yeah, we fixed this. Oh, that's an embarrassing bug. It often happens. Do not, all these resume failures, all the suspend failures, do not accept them. This is, they are not given by God. This is, <laughs> this is a bug you need to report. It's, it's, it's important that you, it's your job. You, it works for me. But, but can I say it, it works for me? So I can, as long as I don't know that there are bugs out there, I can fix them. Even if I know there are bugs, I sometimes also can fix them. I have to confess that there are bugs that will just get fixed with, won't fix in Bugzilla, which is often in my case I can't fix. And I write there, sorry, I believe you, it doesn't work for you, but I don't have the hardware and without the hardware at hand, and sometimes even with the hardware at hand. I'm just as stupid to fix it. So, but even then, it's important to know that there are problems out there, because for OpenSUSE 10.2, I was quite sure suspend to fix it work for everybody, because I haven't got a single bug report, one or two, but these are the clear user errors, and I didn't get many bug reports for suspend to disk in 10.2. And later, I found out it didn't work for anybody, or, but nobody told me. So that's a problem, because I need to know where we need to work on everybody. That's for every project owners. Yeah, and again, I, I really want to promote this. Bug report on, on the SUSE factory, axilla.com, product 11.0, component mobile devices. It will, it will get to me more or less directly, and we will try to fix it. That's, that's the real important thing. Okay, these are the usual interesting links. So, yeah, any more questions? Something you want to tell me? Yeah. Um, are there any plans to support switching from suspend to run from a suspended notebook which is running out of battery to a suspended disk? Actually, that Windows support this? Yes, actually what's there 
what's already there in the framework, but I have not gotten to implementing it in the user interface and in the PM utilities, we can do a suspend to both. So we first write the image to disk, but then just do a suspend to RAM. And an option. Suspend to disk is that is low if you have a lot of memory. And I want to switch it off immediately, and I don't want to wait two minutes. But if it's running out of battery in three days in my pocket, in my bag, then it should suspend the disk. The, the problem is, yeah, the, the suspend to the suspend to both is relatively easy because you just you do a suspend to disk first, but then don't switch it off. Instead, do a suspend to RAM. To do what you want, that's what the old IBM Ready Safe did on ten years ago on ThinkPads. Is they wake up after three hours of suspend to RAM and then do a suspend to disk. I'm sure this is working on G16. Modern hardware will automatically wake up if it gets low on battery, so then you just detect that you're crispy low on battery and you suspend to disk. Yes. It already works if your user space is configured for it. Yes. And you do not want to wait yeah. until the battery is actually dead. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> what, I, what I will offer, I hope I will get ready for 11.0, is that we can offer the suspend to both as a configuration feature. The, the problem is with the wake up on the alarm timer or wake up on the empty battery is that you don't know on which machine it actually works. So we need to have some kind of whitelist or something like that, which is, we need somebody who maintains this. And that's basically a problem. It's a resource problem. So you will probably get suspend to both, easily configurable. And basically, you can still just say suspend and take the machine away as long as it works reliably. And you, you assure that it works reliably by reporting every bug you find. OK, more questions? Okay. Uh, so when you talk about sneaky Linux, um, yeah. one of the problems there is that uh, you'll have to accept a certain amount of loss of functionality in some situations. For yes. instance, uh, you're on. You said you won't need to change hardware. Whereas in the old PC case, uh, in order to have wireless continuous work in a yeah. useful way, they need to have a wireless chipset that basically runs its yes. own 8211 stack. Yeah. And most hardware is not capable of doing yes. that, so you're going to not be able to do this while also using the wireless network. That's what I actually said. With we need support from the hardware vendors, right? right. So it's, powerless it's prototyping a large amount of extra expense in the wireless hardware. That's going to add like a uh, dollar per. Month, yeah, but maybe maybe once the really sold on. yes. Pavel is, is prototyping this, and once he says this would be working if you would be selling appropriate hardware. Maybe companies like Intel or something say, okay, we can put this into the firmware probably, or we can do a little bit. The hardware uh, just, it, it does not need to be the chipset they use. Uh, the the, the, the wireless chips nowadays are not anywhere near it. Most wireless chips don't have anywhere near enough hardware capabilities to do this. You need to go back to full Mac type. Probably, probably you, you say, okay, it doesn't work when, when wireless is turned on. Right. I can still do my presentation here with the machine most of the time sleeping. Mm -hmm. So that's, it yeah. won't work in all cases. And it's a prototype yet. It's ongoing work and we never know, we don't know, even Tom <coughs> said he doesn't know if it leads to anything. But it's an interesting project and that's why I wanted to show you, mm -hmm. to mention it. Yeah. Okay, I think time's used up. So thanks for coming.